Let's see if we can get a handle on this number. Uh, 10 to the 23rd. Well, I don't know how to picture 10 to the 23rd. It's a ridiculously large number. Let's try a few things. Here's an estimate of the world population at the beginning of 2015. And let's say you take a mole of US dollars. Let's pretend you can actually do that. And we'll spread that out equally amongst all the people in the world. And we'll tell everybody to start spending a million dollars per hour. That's a lot of money per hour, and that's a lot of people. But it takes over 9,500 years to spend all of that money. Okay, that didn't help. Let's try something else. Let's take a mole of pennies, U.S. pennies. Let's assume that actually means something. Okay, that's 10 to the 24th grams. That's not helping. I don't know what 10 to the 24th grams are. Even worse, the mass of the Earth is 10 to the 27th grams. Okay, let's move on. Let's take the continental United States. And it snows. And we take a mole of snowflakes and drop them all on the, the U.S. And now it's your job to go out and shovel just your driveway. Well, a mole of snowflakes spread out amongst the whole United States. That doesn't sound too bad. Well, it's over 100 feet thick on your driveway. Okay, none of these examples helped. The reason why they didn't help is Avogadro's number is not a macroscopic number. It helps us connect the macroscopic world to the microscopic world. This is fluticasone propionate. It's a corticosteroid used to treat symptoms of people who have asthma. So you take a little puff on this and it's 100 micrograms for a dose. Now 100 micrograms is about 100 grains of sand. I can picture that. And so one dose of this is approximately 10 to the 17th molecules. Now 10 to the 17th, don't understand. 100 grains of sand, therefore 100 micrograms, that I understand. That's the point here. You connect ridiculously large microscopic numbers to the macroscopic world. And here's water and glycerol. And in terms of volume, well, there's far more glycerol than there is water. In terms of mass, there's far more glycerol than there is water. However, there's approximately one mole of each substance in there. One mole of water, one mole of glycerol. So we can't use mass to easily compare numbers of things because molecules and particles have different masses. That mole concept is going to help us in this section. Here's some sodium chloride and urea on, a, on weighing dishes. And that doesn't look like it's that different. I mean, it looks like there's more urea than sodium chloride. But the masses are really close to each other. And the amount of sodium chloride in terms of moles and urea is the same for each of them. The reason why they look different, the sodium chloride is fine little particles. They pack together really well. The urea, it's like little round BBs. They don't pack together nearly as well as the sodium chloride. And so again, we've got to be careful. These visual 
things, you know, as far as how much it looks like, we can't depend upon that. You know, the top one, okay, that's piled pretty high with that compound. Well, there's a lot on the ones on the bottom. In fact, on the bottom, there's more than 1.5 times the mass as the top. But there's the same number of moles of each. It's one mole of each. Now remember the sodium chloride example from before. Here I'm going to compare it to sugar, sucrose. And it doesn't look like it's that different. It looks like there's a bigger pile of sucrose. But you know, if you think of the crystals, sucrose crystals versus the sodium chloride that you've seen in table salt, the sucrose crystals are bigger. If I want to get one mole of sucrose, because that's one mole of sodium chloride, I need a little more than one weighing dish. I need actually almost six weighing dishes to compare to that of sodium chloride. So this mole concept, as I said before, that's going to allow us to compare things. Instead of saying things like 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the 17th, we'll say things like 1 mole, 0.5 moles, 2.3 moles.